Sometimes I wish African-American men would stop identifying with dusty men. I feel like part of this gender war is because you have people identifying with that which does not define them. You hear black men and you think yourself. And I understand because I would hear black women and think myself. But every time I get around one of these black men, I mean, unless they're bitter about not being able to have me, attract me, sleep with me, whatever. They're like, oh, you know, we're not talking about you. You're not this type. Right. You know, you don't qualify. You're different. Blah, blah, blah. And I know that. But every now and then I would hear black women and, and act like my name was called or like my number was pulled and it wasn't. So I would say the same thing that like a lot of good black men need to learn unless the lesson that I just learned. A lot of good black men need to learn the lesson that I just learned. Stop identifying with dust. Stop identifying with trifling. Stop thinking because somebody says, oh, this black guy and these guys are like this. They're not talking about you. You who are beautiful, you who are kind, you who are educated, God-fearing, protectors, providers, caregivers, like no, like like dutiful to your mother, your father, like we're not we're not talking about you. Those who know how to cornrow hair, put a part in your daughter's hair, you know, taking your kids to, you know, all kind of practices, medical appointments, like we're not talking about you. That's babe. Um <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> hang on, I'm gonna play this for you. All right. Don't identify with this guy, okay? If he catches a, a George Floyd knee to the neck, you don't gotta, don't worry about him, all right? Don't worry about him. And there are black women who I need to not worry about as well. We're not the same and, there's, and there needs to be a division. We are, we are different classes of people. A lot of news to get to. We begin with breaking news this noon. COVID forcing fifth graders out of their classrooms. Here's video from Chopper 46 shows Eastside Elementary in Marietta. That's where school officials send parents an email saying they're moving to virtual learning because of a high number of positive COVID cases. Parents finding out about this an hour ago and only had 30 minutes to get to the school and pick up their children. School officials say only fifth grade classes are being impacted at this time. In-person learning will resume on Monday, August 23rd. Also breaking right now, at least one man arrested in the case of a missing Atlanta teenager found in Arlington, Texas overnight. 23-year-old Andre McNair now charged after Caitlin Winchester disappeared following the... Now, what really sucks about Andre McNair is that he looks like every black man USA, like his features, his hair, just and that kind of sucks. Right. Um, I think if I dressed a certain way, then sure, I could pass as a dusty black woman. Actually, I don't know if I could. Because even in sweat, sometimes I wear my partner's old t-shirts like to work out, to take the trash out. But there's just something about me where you can kind of tell that I don't come from the criminal element, right? And I think that's a little bit more difficult for black men because, I mean, honestly, this guy looks like a criminal to me, but he might not look like a criminal to you. But I mean, I love natural hair. I love dreads, fros, twist outs. Y'all know I'm a natural myself. But I mean, outside with this going on, like maybe that's a sign. Maybe that's a sign. This level of unkempt, maybe that's a sign. That he's, you know, from the wrong. First day of school. Now, CBS 46's Tracen Bragg has been updating the story for us. He broke it overnight. Tracen, this is very interesting. The Stark contrast to this brother right here. This brother is giving me two parent household. This brother is giving me clean cut. He is giving me educated. He is giving me, I mean, especially with all of that forehead, he's giving me um, well mannered, right? Because, you know, that frontal lobe is enlarged when the forehead is like that. He's giving me manners. He's giving me, you know, cognitive ability. He's giving me, uh, He's giving good black men. Now, if he turned around and killed a black woman, y'all would be like, well, you should have chose better. You should have knew better, right? <laughs> but he's giving me good guy.
And I believe looking at the two of them on screen like this, they, they are in stark contrast to one another. They may have the same skin color and maybe even hair texture, but that is where it begins and ends. I see a difference between these two men. These two men are not the same. And I would be deeply sad if this man felt like with this video, what I was saying about this criminal on the other end, like, like if he took it personally, because it's not about him. It's not about him. He's better than this. He doesn't deserve this. Right? Let, let's let's keep making these distinguish uh, distinguishments, I guess, while we're busy with this like gender war because everybody isn't a target. Everybody should not be attacked. Everybody, y'all listen. Charges now that we're seeing. That's right, Karen. I mean, this is a huge bombshell in this investigation. 23-year-old McNair is now sitting in a Texas jail cell after that young teen never made it home after a first day of school here at North Atlanta High School. A family's living nightmare has now finally ended. Officials say 23-year-old Andre Marcellus McNair is now sitting in a jail in Arlington, Texas, charged with harboring a runaway child for his role in a 14-year-old girl's disappearance. The family of 14-year-old Caitlin Winchester tells CBS 46 she is now safe. Atlanta Public Schools also releasing a statement explaining the teen was found all the way in Arlington, Texas. That's 807 miles away from North Atlanta High School where she was last seen. This all after Caitlin went missing Thursday after her first day of school. Caitlin's father says the straight-A student texted him Thursday around 5.40 p.m. saying she was struck in traffic on the bus on her way home. But she never made it home. Tuesday, a donation from Insight Global bumped the reward for information leading to her whereabouts up to $100,000. Also Tuesday, Crime Stoppers Greater Atlanta reached out to Crime Stoppers Houston, asking them to share Caitlin's information, believing she could be in the Lone Star State. A short time later, she was found. APS tells me the FBI is involved in the investigation and is currently working on the next steps. Now, officials are sharing more information on that charge that McNair is facing. It's a Class A misdemeanor punishable by up to one year in county jail and up to a $4,000 fine in Texas. Now, as for Caitlin's family, her father tells CBS 46 that they have never heard of McNair, and they're looking forward to learning more from police in the coming days. Reporting live in Atlanta, I'm Tracy Bragg. C Look, Jason Bragg or whatever his name was, I dig that brother. And I don't care what he's married to. I wouldn't care if he was married to a black woman, white woman, Asian woman, Arab woman, purple woman, Skittle colored woman, like, like love him. We like this. We need this. We want this more of this. This is good. This cannot be presented as an attack on all black men, brother. You are not all black men, especially some of the men who come to my channel. You're very distinguished and you're really worthy of praise, of thanks, of gratitude, of being, you know, uplifted, you know, like, you know, we, we are both, both genders. We are prizes un, unto our own, you know, it, within ourselves. You deserve good partners. You deserve respect. You deserve a happy home, peace in your home. Like, like you're not this, you're not this punk thuggery out here. Let the police have that, that guy. And I don't want to hear no, oh, that's just a young brother. He's 23. My ass, that little girl was dragged from one state to another. One state from another after being hit by a car for what? You were afraid for her to like, no. For her to get help? Don't let your sympathy go first to him. Your sympathy ought to first go to the girl who was kidnapped. That's where it should go. And you protecting these criminals and these people who are wrong and you just constantly force the victim down. Like you, you, you make being a victim even worse. We literally have a culture of celebrating people who victimize and shaming people who are the actual victims. Stop it. In reality, a lot of women who are divested or those who are divested sympathizers like myself, like we've got no problem with the actual black men. It's the trifle and sorry excuses for men that are problematic. It's the abusive criminal element that is problematic. And it's not time to mammy for them anymore because they've taken our, our entire value as a community down the shithole. Darn it, now I'm gonna have to edit this video, crap. You wanna argue? I can't argue with you.
with you. You mad. Explain the remix. I can't argue with you. No.